everybody and welcome back to Science Week Live. It's Friday, which means, well, it's the end of the week, but it also means it's our last Science Week Live. Aww. It's kind of sad. I've had a fantastic time speaking with lots of transition year students all across Ireland to put these three shows together. And what a week we have had. And today is no different. Today I'm joined by the Dominican College Cyan Hill students. We've got fifth years and sixth years today. And uh, as ever, they've been putting comments together and reports together about what science means to them in their lives. And we'll be seeing them shortly. But first, let's take a look at what it's like to be a student at Cyan Hill. Dominican College Cyan Hill is situated in Cross Avenue, Black Rock, County Dublin. It was founded by the Dominican Sisters in 1836. We have 500 students in this all-girls school. This school aims to help each student achieve their full potential in a happy and secure environment. We have a STEM club which involves two reps from each year and our job is to promote our love of all things science. We also have a chess club, a maths club and we're soon going to have a coding club. Wishing everyone a super science week from Sign Hill. Look, it looks like it's a great place to go to school in Zion Hill. So, and welcome. Welcome, Dominican College, Zion Hill. How are you? Are you good? Good, yeah. yeah. It's great to be finally here, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. We've, been, we've been talking for many weeks about this uh, show, so it's lovely that all the work that you've put together, we're finally going to present it to everybody. So I know who you are, but they don't. So why don't you introduce yourselves? Maisie. Hi, I'm Maisie. I'm 17 and a student in Dominican College, Zion Hill. And I'm interested in all things arts, so playing guitar, music, music, Lovely. painting, all that stuff. Lovely, yeah. thanks Maisie. Keisha. Hello, I'm Keisha. I'm 17 and I'm in fifth year and I love music, going to concerts and reading books. Lovely. Penelope. Hi, I'm Penelope. I'm 17 years old and a six year student in Sign Hill. I love reading and listening to music. Fantastic. Sock. Hi, I'm Sock. I'm in fifth year Sign Hill. I'm 16 and I like to listen to music and do outdoor activities. Fantastic. And Ira. Hi, I'm Ira. I'm 18. I'm in sixth year in Sign Hill and I love photography and listening to music. Oh, fantastic. So you're fifth year in sixth year. What's it like being in sixth year? Oh, wow. yeah. But it's good, yeah. yeah. We're not going to lie about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. yeah the pressure's on this year, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Well, we'll, we'll talk later about yeah. that. <laughs> and then, why have some of you got black jumpers and then red jumpers? What's that? So, about? the black jumpers are strictly for six years, so we get a couple of little privileges. <laughs> yeah, and then the rest of the school is still in the red. So, okay, yeah. so, so you're, you represent the rest of the school in the red. Yeah. So, so, you're in fifth year? Yeah. So, what's that like? It's a it's big step a big up. change from TY. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're getting ready to be to wear the black jumper. <laughs> <laughs> now, I also noticed that you've all got badges on with the with an atom. What's that about? Yeah, so luckily we were elected to be the leaders of the STEM committee in our school. Mm. So the first one here it says Cannery. So me, Penelope, yeah. and Maisie are the leaders for this year for our STEM committee. Congratulations. And then, and then the atom one is for to represent that we are on the STEM committee. Fantastic. So, and and then you've got them as well, um, Sock and Keisha. Are you on the STEM committee yes. too? Yes. yes. Oh, wow. How many in the STEM committee? In yes. total, it's two representatives per year going down from fifth to first, and then it's our three leaders then, yeah. and then that's for all of our committees as well in yeah. school. Fantastic. So I'm in good company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of STEM engagement here already. So that's great. So I, I can imagine our, our show is going to be packed full of really interesting facts. So. Speaking of which, you know, what do we have coming up? Maisie? So firstly, me, Ira and Penelope did a research project on the HPV vaccine oh, and good. its kind of innovation in cancer research and cancer treatment. Wow, that sounds really good. Looking yeah. forward to that. Keisha, what else? Well, Sock and I conducted some research and made a video all about the future of technology. Mm, that's my kind of... Yeah, that's my, that's my kind of report. Uh, Penelope? So we have the opportunity to interview um, Dr. Mary Canavan, an immunologist from Trinity College. Oh, great. That's related to your science yes. work. Oh, brilliant. That's fantastic. Sock, what else? Uh, Maisie, Keisha and I have the opportunity to interview Phil Smith about ah, Science Week and his new event in Dublin. Brilliant. The wonderful Phil Smith. That should be a bit fun. <laughs> and uh, and Ira, what, like, what um, else? Lastly, Penelope and Sock will be reviewing all the social media interactions. Whoa, there's a lot there. We better get going, hadn't we? Because the talk, the clock is ticking even. You know, it's Friday. I'm like, oh. Okay, so let's start then, I think, with, the, with your report on the future of technology. So let's look at the video first, and then maybe I'll talk to yourself, Keisha and Sock, about how that all went. So let's take a look. 
There's no doubt that technology has brought us a long way. Technology has become an essential part of our everyday life. It seems almost impossible to go a day without using our phones or other technological devices. But how much further can technology take us? Is it the ultimate solution to all our problems? What's in store for us in the future of technology? Technology is a vital factor needed to boost the evolution of humankind. It's especially useful for helping us achieve our Millennium Development Goals, such as 1. Eradicating poverty and hunger by enhancing accessibility to a variety of job opportunities and increasing food production through genetically modified organisms. And achieving universal primary education by increasing accessibility through remote learning and resources through technology. The healthcare industry has also benefited immensely from technology, from the inventions of medical devices such as pacemakers for the heart. Human aiding devices such as hearing and speaking aids, and also general data collection and the trackability of medical records. Neil Harbison is a prime example of someone who has used technology to improve his everyday quality of life. Neil Harbison was born with complete color blindness. He implanted an antenna in his skull which translates colors into audible vibrations. This shows how technology can be used to improve our lives. Technology also has the potential to bring a quicker solution for us to become more sustainable. Whenever we have a problem, we build things to change the environment we live in. But what if we change ourselves and make ourselves more adaptable? For example, It's too dark for us to see at night, so we build street lights that one, require a lot of energy, and two, aren't wholly eco-friendly. But what if we created a device that could enhance our vision at night? So instead of changing the environment, we're changing ourselves. However, there are many ethical concerns that question any further advancements in technology. Do we want robots walking around with us? And what about job loss due to AI? Or what about the potential of AI developing emotions and taking control over us? Thanks, Thanks for, for watching! watching. That's a great report. I love that. There's so much in that I want to I wanna ask you about. Um, firstly, I want to say hello to Michael. I, I want to say hello to Michael. Hello there. I forgot to say hello at the start. So hello, Michael. He's signing for us today. Um, great. So the future of technology. So how did you research all that? Because there's a lot in that. Uh, Keisha and I identified and developed the topic. And I'm sure it wasn't that hard for us because we're very passionate about this topic. And we read some articles and journals. Yeah. And the most interesting one was Neil Harbison for us. Okay, tell us about Neil Harbison. Why was he the most interesting, Keisha? Well, Neil Harbison was born with complete colour blindness. So um, he went to DCU and he met a, a, computer, a student there, an engineer. Yeah. And they came up with this design for an antenna to put on his head. And Neil Harbison really likes music. So the antenna basically translated colour into um, audible vibrations. So he heard yeah. colour. That's really smart. And, and of course, he's now like an official cyborg. Like he's, a, yeah. he's like a big celebrity and everything. You know, we tried to get him. I tried to get him to talk to you on the show today because I met him. He came to Ireland in 2014. They had a, they had a film festival for, for Science Week and he came along. But he was just about to get the, the implant. So it's, it's permanently implanted now. And he said, so he's an official cyborg. Would you do that? Would you be a cyborg? I know you like technology, but would you become a cyborg? I mean, it would be quite efficient and it yeah. would, there's some positives, but there would be negatives as well. Yeah. And he was saying that it's a solution to, you know, the way our planet is going and climate yeah. change. If we yeah. adapt instead of that, that's really interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Would you do that? I don't know. I don't know if I'd do that. Okay, well, it'd be handy for school, yeah. for exams. <laughs> yeah, it'd be super powerful yeah. and everything, wouldn't it? Yeah. So how's fifth year going? What's that like? You just said it's very different from TY. What did you mean by that? It's a lot more work. It's yeah. a lot yeah. more homework. Yeah. 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 Have you started like the prep for the leaving search and all that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Right. And so then what do you want to do with your lives? Like what would you what would you like to do after school then? I would like so. to be an electronic engineer. Yeah. And engineering does run through my family, so okay. inspiration comes okay. from there. That's great. And that's why you like this report, that, yeah. I guess, right? Okay. And then what about you, Keisha? Well, just like SOC, a woman in STEM, I want to go into engineering and more specifically biomedical engineering. And where did that come from then? Well, my mum my mom works in St. Vincent's Hospital, so I had the opportunity to work in radiology and nuclear medicine. Wow. Which it was just eye-opening. Like, I got to see all the CAT scans oh, and nice. all, like, the radioactive canisters and particles in the lab. Oh, wow. And then that obviously inspired you yeah. to study about, oh, that's fantastic. Well, I hope you stay on course as another engineer. <laughs>
women in STEM. That would be terrific. Um, okay, well, that's really, really interesting. Your, your report on the future of tech, there's just so much there. and Who knows where the future goes, right? Mm -hmm. But thanks very much for that. Okay, all right, well, let's now keep going. Uh, what the amazing uh, Cyan Hill uh, have prepared for us throughout the show is questions for you to think about uh, whether you know the answer to these. So this is the first question and you're going to hear the answer shortly. And then after that, we're going to go to the other studio with my co-host Maisie, who's going to tell you what's coming up next. What will our data plates look like in the future? So hi everyone, and we're here actually in the lab space. So this is a different studio and we're here with the amazing Phil Smith. Ah, you built me up. Yeah, <laughs> the amazing Phil Smith. To be amazing. Okay, great. So he is the creator of the Dublin Science Festival this year. So for the first time, and yeah, we're gonna ask him some of our really absolutely dying to know questions. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. This sounds exciting. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. forward. <laughs> so if Keisha, you wanna go first? Sure. So your new event for Science Week. Come here to I tell ya. Uh, there's events running throughout the whole week for Science Week mm. and it's covering such a diverse range of topics such as the chemistry of cosmetics and drag me to the lab. So we, we're dying to know just how did you come up with these topics and like what influenced you to choose them? Uh, well I mean the thing is I often don't choose them and like, thank you for having me here it's great it's, <laughs> it's great to meet people and that's actually the way that we often come up with the ideas for these types of things or projects or the, the thing that I have, which is the attention span of a magpie. I like shiny <laughs> things and I go follow them. Um, but I meet people, I talk to them, and we wanted, like Science Week often is taught about just as a, 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 a festival or a week for kids or maybe, you know, older, kind of slightly older teens or tweens or whatever else it is. Uh, so we wanted to create something definitely for grown-ups, like grown-ups like me-ish <laughs> kind of grown-up, um, but stuff that they'd be interested in. So we asked them what they'd be like and they wanted to see more representation from different communities, different genders, different sexualities, different um, cultures. And it was really good to see that, but not just there for the token, but actually fun entertaining yeah, events with it. So we're doing that, chemistry of cosmetics as well, that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, like what goes into the stuff that we're putting on our face? Like I am caked <laughs> in makeup at the moment to uh, these lights at me. So it's, it's stuff that we'd be interested in, but they are fun. We want to have a bit of crack. Yeah. That's the idea. Uh, we also want to know what motivated you. Did anything inspire you or was it just for fun or to raise awareness? Uh, kind of both. Like what I wanted to, like I always want to have fun with all of the things we do, but I also get a lot of enjoyment out of seeing other people have fun, uh, it's particularly when it's something that you've created or been a part of a team, like you're doing it as a team today. <laughs> yeah. It's good when you watch it back, you're like, we did that. Yeah. And it's great to be part of that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, the motivation is that, but like, it's also giving people a platform. It's like, I, it's like I'm the curator and director are, but I'm not headlining any events. Cause like I, I, I do a lot of that to the rest of you, but it's also about giving other people other opportunities. Sometimes people go on stage or other places and talk about it. We want to really do it and give people a chance to actually represent, try, fail, go again and learn from it, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, the inspiration is having a go and see what happens. And I mean, like we might learn something from it. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> and then we also just wanted to ask you, what are the challenges that you face? <laughs> faced kind of organizing all of these events, sure, I'm yeah. sure is difficult. Uh, it is and it isn't. Like if you love what you do, I mean, like anything that's worth doing is never gonna be completely easy, okay? My greatest challenge is admin. I hate all of that kind of stuff. So I hire people who love that kind of stuff. Like Lorna, my friend, who loves spreadsheets. They go away with you, <laughs> do that kind of stuff. So the challenges often are like finding the right venues, getting the message out to people as well is a quite different, because in our world today, there's lots of Instagram, there's lots of all that kind of stuff. So you have to kind of promote it as best you can. So we're starting this year with about eight or nine events. They're, they're all good and they'll grow again. So next year we want to go bigger and bigger. So on our website, kamir.ie, you'll see what's still available for the weekend as well. So that's stuff. how we find out all our tickets and information is Smooth, on the website. Smooth, Francie, you're getting, yeah. they're really good at this. I threw it up and she knocked it down. Yeah, they're lovely, they're great. Perfect. So now we're just going to go on to the quiz answer from the question that we seen beforehand and then go back into the studio with Neve. Due to climate change, we'll need climate resistant crops to withstand extreme weather patterns. We'll also need a different source of protein as animal meat has a high carbon footprint. Insects, for example, are rich in protein and iron and require less water resources and have a lesser impact on land. There you go. Who knew? What a great 
great answer to that quiz question. So thanks very much for that, um, Sock and Keisha. Now, I am joined by Maisie, Penelope and Ira because you're going to talk about the report that you focused on, which was about the HPV vaccine. So tell us, give us some context. Why, why, what, why about the HPV vaccine? Tell us, why is that important? I think when we first were given the opportunity and we were told that we would be able to work with yourself, yeah. we basically all got together, the three of us, and we all immediately went, cancer research. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know how that <laughs> happened, yeah. but yeah. we all just had the exact same yeah. thought. And then I think because it's such a topic that is within, especially Irish news, yeah. of the HPV vaccine, mm. we all got it first when we were younger in first year. I think we really wanted to focus in on and, and do a research product and find out more. Okay, all right. So, so where did you start? How did you start with it? Because does everybody get the HPV vaccine? So basically, we were one of the first years to actually receive it. Mm. And, you know, parents were debating whether to give it to kids or not. Kids were debating and arguing yeah. over to get it. And um, so in the end, we ended up getting it. And there are so many benefits from getting it, just even, not even to prevent cancer, but yeah. to prevent genital warts and everything. Oh, right. But okay. Okay. unfortunately, the year we got it, boys weren't offered it. So, okay. yeah. All right. And you're, you're a twin? Yep, I'm a twin. <laughs> so your brother didn't get it? Yeah, so what Penelope said, um, we were the first generation to properly receive the vaccine. And among us two, I was the first twin to get it. Um, and I found it a bit strange that mm my brother, he wasn't offered the vaccine until a year later or later on in that year. And I think it's really strange that, you know, our teachers and parents haven't received it yet. I never got it. Yeah. yeah I never so got it. I Is there an age limit on it? Yeah, yeah, so it's, I don't know the exact number, but I know that like when I got it done four years ahead of me, my sister, she wasn't able to get it. Yeah. So it's, something along the lines of the way the vaccine works, yeah. that there's actual aim to limit for it to work best. And it's also given in two doses as well. So it's all very specific yeah. to get it. So yeah, we were really, really lucky to actually be the first year because if we were a year older, sure, we yeah. probably wouldn't have gotten it. Yeah. So is everybody getting it now every year? Yes. Yeah. So Unless yeah. you have a reason and your parents don't okay. want you to. All right, great. You have, a particular you have a particular connection to this topic? Yourself? Yeah, I've always been really interested in cancer research. When I was younger, I really wanted to be a cancer paediatrician <laughs> yeah. kind of went out the window a little bit but your literature now so yeah exactly it's fine um but yeah no i've been really interested in it um so my family members unfortunately passed away with cancer so i've always been interest, interested in it ever since i was really really young so even though it's not something i probably want to go into it's still something i'm really really passionate about and yeah. hopefully to find something that will help people yeah. yeah yeah and you want to dedicate the show yeah um we would love to dedicate the show to vicky Phelan, yeah. um a woman who's advocated for cancer research all her life you know it's mm -hmm. as young women in stem mm -hmm. it's very inspiring and encouraging yeah it is it's great i think that's really nice and of course mm -hmm. we will of course yeah. absolutely dedicated to vicky so um let's take um let's take a look at the at yeah. the at the video and then i think you're going to be interviewing somebody connected to that so who are you talking yeah. to you're going back to your studio yeah <laughs> afterwards. Who, are you, who are you going to be speaking um, next? we actually get to interview mary canavan an immunologist from trinity college wow are you looking forward to that yeah, yeah. very excited <laughs> best of luck with that so um Let's take a look at their uh, science report about the HPV vaccine. guys, we're back in the lab space and we are, have the amazing opportunity to talk to Dr. Mary Canavan on virtual Zoom. So we're going to say hello to her there. Hi. Hi. Hi, guys. It's so good to have you here and we have so many questions to ask you, um, especially because of your field that you're in. So if Ira, you want to start? 
Yeah, um, so first off, it's so lovely to meet you. And our first question is, do you think the future of vaccines could potentially target cancer cells properly? Great question. So I just wanted to start off and just say, thank you so much guys this is such a great project that you've all have done and i think to see you know such passionate committed young women in stem really raising this issue is so important and it's a beautiful tribute to vicky Phelan. so well done um and yeah i'm very encouraged about the research and the possibility that one day we could have a vaccine that would target cancer cells so what we're doing at the moment is we're understanding more and more about our immune system but also we need to really understand more and more about cancer cells because cancer cells are very, very different to our normal cells. So if we can somehow understand what makes that cancer cell so specific, then we can use our immune system to actually target it and kill those cancer cells. So Ireland and, and Europe in general is really, really strong in immunology research and cancer research. So I think there's huge potential there and we're moving all the time to try and find better cures. And really what we want is and it's the whole point of, of what you guys talked about with the HPV vaccine is that we want to prevent cancers. You know, if we can prevent cancers before they even start, then we don't even have to treat, we don't have to cure. And, and that's another really great strength of the HPV vaccine. Perfect. So um, we actually had the pleasure of talking to Dr. Antoinette, um, Dr. Antoinette Perry from UCD. And she was talking to us about how cannabis oil could be uh, used to treat cancer or prevent cancer. We were just wondering what you thought of this idea. Yeah, so that's a, you know, a great idea. Um, so at the moment, um, there is some research that has looked at um, cells. If we take cancer cells out of the body and we treat them with these cannabis oils, we can see that some of the cancer cells actually stop growing, which is a really great thing. Um, but the next thing what we need to do is we need to move that into um, mouse studies or animal studies and then finally we move it into a human study. And that's kind of how research goes. Is we start off with looking at something in the lab and then we move into to animals. So at the moment we're not quite there yet. We still don't understand what would happen in the human. Um, and at the moment some of the best treatments that we have are still chemotherapy which we know has some unfortunate side effects some difficult side effects but we also have immunotherapy and this type of treatment is really where we use the power of our immune system to try and kill those cancer cells directly so at the moment that's really the the most um, therapeutic uh, benefit treatment that we have but definitely there is really promising research coming down the line as well Great, so we finally just wanted to ask you, um, as girls who are really interested in STEM, especially the biology side of it, how exactly did you get into career and did you always want to do this? Great question, thank you so much. So um, I was really interested in hearing your, your stories earlier on. I personally didn't really know what I wanted to do when, your age, when I was your age. Um, so I didn't do science for my junior cert and as I got a little bit older into the leaving cert I became more and more curious which I think you guys all already have abundance of and abundance of passion as well um, and I really wanted to understand how things work and I think that's kind of the basis of, of a great scientist um, and from there I was very lucky to be encouraged by some wonderful females in STEM and in biology and in immunology um, so I think for anyone who's interested in the field, you know, follow your gut, follow your heart. If you're passionate about this subject, you'll go a long way. Passion will get you almost anywhere. Um, and also, you know, there's always people who are willing and want to encourage people to, to go into this field. So kind of seek out people who are in those careers, and I'm sure that they'd be really willing to talk to you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you talking Thanks, with us guys. and now we are actually going to go to our final quiz question and then we're going to talk with Penelope and Sokka for our social media response. Are you right-handed or left-handed and what about dolphins? What about dolphins? I didn't know dolphins had hands. I'm personally left-handed so I want to know the, uh, the answer to that question. I don't know what the right answer is though so I'm looking forward to that and thank you Maisie over in the lab doing a fantastic job as our co-host for our lab studio. Now it's time to find out about what you have been thinking about the show and what questions you have burning in your head to ask <laughs> of our amazing Dominican College Sign Hill uh, students. Hello, Penelope. Hello, Hello Sock. <laughs> so tell us, what have people been asking? Give us your top three. I think that's all we have time for. So, yeah. Penelope, so, what's um, the first one? Mike would like to know, what do you like to see in, what would you like to see in Science Week next year? Um, mm. 
Hmm. Oh, that's so what would you like to see in Science Week next year? Very Maybe you have a question. think stock. What would you like to see in Science Week next year? Uh, I would certainly like to see more younger children get involved. Yeah, yeah. More workshops. Yeah. Any particular like topics? Like, what do you like to do in your spare time when you're not studying and you're not <laughs> you're not doing this? Maybe some exercise and yeah, yeah like. Science about the hair and everything. Oh gosh, I'm talking about the <laughs> hair. Having curly hair is a science in and of itself. I know that they've <laughs> classified hair from straight to curly, but I would love to pick up top tips of how to get rid get rid of curly hair being dry. That's what I would love. <laughs> Penelope, have you any um, ideas about what you'd like to see? I next would year? love to see more of the subject of genetics. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. would be that would be really great. Yes. That's terrific. Okay, um, Sock, give us the next question there. Uh, Harry would like to know what activities were involved in the STEM committee. Yeah, so what does the STEM committee do? What kind of activities do you do in the school? We do loads of yeah. loads of them. Um, maths club. <laughs> chess club. Chess club yeah. There's, um, we actually have a maths olympiad on at the moment, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to have gone to your school. <laughs> I would have nerded out. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and, and do you get lots of participation in maths club? Mm. And we yeah. do yeah. actually, like... Oh, what was it? Um, Monday for Science Week, our lovely biology teacher, Miss Brosnan, actually um, held a demonstration of loads of experiments, like the flame test and loads of things, turning water into wine and... What? Yeah. Gosh, it's amazing. <laughs> and um, no, loads of people showed up. The room was packed full. Like, I, I, I could barely stand. It was incredible. <laughs> now, do you ever get people to come in and speak? Do you, get, do, 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 you do that? We do. Um, obviously, we got Antoinette Perry in. Um, yeah. We actually... We do get loads of people in. Um, last year they had people in yeah, as well. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's absolutely fantastic. Gosh, I'd love to have gone to your school. I would have loved the STEM club. Okay, and then lastly, I think we've we've time uh, for one more there, yeah. Sock. Or, or Penelope, actually. Yeah. It's your <laughs> so, Kira, I'd like to know, have you felt inspired by this project? Um, yeah. yeah, so have you felt inspired by this project? I think we have. Yes. It definitely yeah. gave us a better insight into transhumanism and vaccines and just general knowledge of what we love to do. Yeah. yeah, I'm inspired. I tell you, I'm inspired by you. I'm amazed that, you know, people at your age are so tuned in to where science is everywhere and where the passion is and where the curiosity is and, and how you just took this idea and you just went with it. Like I would give you a rough idea and then the next time I'd meet, you'd have all your videos ready and not just you, the other two schools as well. I'm, I'm extremely inspired by it. And I'm really glad that we have one comment that actually is, is great. So, so Sok, do you want to wanna, wanna, um, read out there that comment from Viviana? Uh, Viviana said, the future of STEM looks bright with such motivated and passionate people like you. You know what? I couldn't agree more. Thank you very much, Viviana. So thanks for that, social media, and keep the comments coming because we'll be looking at them afterwards. And now um, it's time for the answer to the quiz question about are you left-handed or right-handed? I didn't even know dolphins had hands, but there you go. I'm left-handed. So let's hear the answer. 90% of humans are right-handed and so are the majority of dolphins. Gorillas tend to be right-handed, kangaroos are generally set paws, cats can even have a preference depending on whether they are male or female. Who knew? That's amazing! That's amazing that you did that. Thank you very much, Sock and Keisha, for those incredible questions and answers. I don't know where you found them out, but they're amazing. <laughs> so we've come to the end of the show. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've really enjoyed talking to you and getting to know you, not just today, but over, over the last couple of weeks and the other two schools, Regina Mundy and, and St. Louis, uh, during the week. So um, this just doesn't happen though, right? You have a, we have a big team of people that we, we have to thank today. So firstly, I think let's thank our interviewees, Phil Smith, the amazing Phil Smith and, and Professor um, Mary Canavan. But from your side, from, from Dominican College, Sion Hill, who do you need to thank? We want to say thank you to our STEM teachers. So yeah. Ms. Brosnan, Ms. Spain, um, Dr. Jones and Mr. O'Neill, so yeah. they all help us so much. Um, our principal and vice principal, Dr. Condren and Miss Reed, and then our the famous twin who also did our interview <laughs> with us as well. Yeah. yeah, so we really just want to thank them all so much. They did so much for us over the yeah. past couple and of weeks. And I, I want to thank you. You've been phenomenal. It's really been lovely getting to know you all. I really feel that we we really had some great chats over the last couple of weeks. So thank you, Maisie. Thank you, Keisha. <laughs> thank you, Penelope. Thank you, Sock. Thank you, Ira. An awesome job on co-hosting, by the way. She was amazing, wasn't she? Yeah, she she was. did you proud, so well done. And keep doing that. And uh, I want to thank everybody here in the room, all the tech crew that have helped us over the last few weeks. 
over the last week and the shows this week. And Science Foundation Ireland, I want to thank you, particularly Michael and Rebecca and Diego who helps us. And want to thank Michael, our amazing signer. So thank you, Michael, and everybody who's been signing for us this week. And all that's left to say is, is goodbye. And of course, to remind everybody that we have dedicated this show to the memory of um, the amazing and inspirational Vicky Phelan. So goodbye, everybody, and, and happy Science Week. So. Ha, ha, ha.